You spent the last week talking about the opioid epidemic in this country. It's unprecedented scope. It's terrible death toll. It's government-fueled oranges and the suffering, the amazing and horrible suffering it has caused. Today we conclude our series, Drugged, with a look at the addicts themselves and the tough journey back to sobriety. This is what the opioid crisis looks like in America. A driver and a passenger slumped over in a Ford Explorer. In the back seat, the driver's four-year-old grandson waiting for someone to show up and help. The adults in the car had overdosed on heroin. That grotesque scene played out last September in East Liverpool, Ohio, but it could have been anywhere in this country. About two and a half million Americans are now addicted to opioids, and that number is rising so fast that public health officials can barely keep up. Between 1999 and 2015, the number of deadly overdoses nationally rose from a little over 8,000 to 33,000 a year. That's a higher death rate than any war we've fought since World War II. In nearly all of those cases, prescription drugs were the root cause. Fully 80% of heroin addicts say they first got hooked on drugs prescribed by a doctor. At first, opioid-based drugs do their job. They kill pain. And for that reason, they're a blessing to cancer patients, the terminally ill, and people recovering from serious surgery. For generations, opioids were prescribed sparingly, with the knowledge that long-term use could lead to addiction and death. That began to change in the 1990s, thanks in large part to lobbying by drug companies hoping to spike their profits. The result? A massive increase in opioid prescriptions from doctors and a huge infusion of narcotics into communities across the country. It is now common, for example, for patients to receive opioids after having their wisdom teeth removed. A recent study found that the majority of those pills go unused by the patient after surgery. The effect of this? 100 million tablets of synthetic heroin in circulation in American neighborhoods. And that's just from wisdom teeth extractions. Multiply that by countless knee surgeries and back injuries and diagnoses of chronic pain, and you'll begin to understand the scope of this problem and how it leads ultimately back to the crushingly sad tableau playing out in the front seat of that Ford Explorer in East Liverpool, Ohio. The driver of the vehicle was trying to get to a hospital after realizing his companion had overdosed. When paramedics arrived at the scene, they were able to administer the anti-opiate drug Narcan, though by that time her body had started to turn blue from lack of oxygen. She survived. Will she ever recover? If she's like many heroin addicts, she won't. She'll keep using and keep overdosing until one day she won't come back. She'll leave a family, maybe children, and they may too become addicts. The cycle will continue until someday someone in charge decides enough and addresses this horror at its source. Jeff is a recovering opioid addict and he reached out to us after this series first segment earlier this week. He joins us tonight live. Jeff, I should say that you're one of a lot of people who emailed the show uh, this week during the series, but I thought your email was, was really powerful uh, and, and moving, uh, actually. So I explain why you emailed initially. Y you became addicted to opiates after a car accident? Yes, that's correct. Um, in 2006, I was in a car accident, um, which led to a back injury, three herniated discs, pinched sciatic nerve. I went to my family orthopedic with the MRI of the injury. He gave me hydrocodone. And within the first few years with physical therapy, going to him, I went and saw surgeons and they all referred me to pain management. Now pain management are anesthesiologists who give out opioids and I don't think they know what the long-term effects are because within eight years I was on crazy amounts of medication that keeps escalating and kept escalating. Thank, thank God I never went to heroin, but it was still a long, long journey. And yet yeah, right now I'm on uh, methadone trying to get off, but my back pain, so it's been a little slower than I would like. And yeah, the medical professionals that they, they really don't have the training I believe they need to do what they're doing. The pain management system is flawed, definitely. So you've been on opioids for 10 years. How has it affected your life, the goals that you had, your relationships with other people? What's it been like? Um, at first, for the first six and a half, seven years, fine. Uh, never got out of control. But what they don't tell you is when you take opioids, your tolerance to pain decreases, but your tolerance to the medication increases. There's no backwards tolerance. So 
you keep building and building and building till you need more and more and more up until the point where there is no more. They won't give you more. So I've done rehabs, 30-day programs, been clean for 60 days, three months. Back was killing me, took the lowest dose of oxycodone I could. And within a month, my tolerance was back to where it was. They didn't give me any information that oxycodone is synthetic heroin. Or, so you didn't know it was addictive going in when you were first prescribed No, it was it. a trusted family orthopedic. I went to, uh, for him as a teenager for a knee injury. I didn't get opioids, but he helped me with a knee injury, so I trusted him. Oh, what's it like when you go off it, when you don't have it? Oh, uh, it's the worst thing in the world. You feel like bugs are crawling out of you. You can't get comfortable, can't sleep. And it's like a 10 to 14 day process. So the 30 day rehabs do about four days of Suboxone, which is a way to get off of it. Yes. And that didn't work because of my injury. So now I'm currently on methadone, slowly tapering down. I've been on oh. that for two years. So knowing what you know now, what would you have done after getting in the car accident 10 years ago? Did a little research on my behalf. I'm, you know, I'm not playing a victim here. I have right. some, some, you know, but these doctors hand out these medications and don't say what they really are. Yeah. And and uh, I I wish I knew. And I think government, pharmaceutical companies, and doctors need to give you a pamphlet, make you go to a class to have knowledge. I am a libertarian with this. I don't think they should be banned. Right. or anything like that, but they should give you knowledge and they should give you sparing doses to take emergency use only. Well, that, that's how I feel because when, if you're only getting it, say, five times a week, people who are addicted, the doctors will be able to pick up quickly because they'll be trying to get in earlier and earlier each month and they give you opioids for 24-7 Right. You know, and because and so, of that, oh, go ahead. I, we're almost out of time, but I just want to know, do you think you'll ever get off it, off the opioids? Um, I, I do not know. I honestly do not know at this point. I'm on methadone, which is a treatment program. Yeah, I know. So it, it, that's an opioid as well. But I know. I'm slowly getting down, right. dealing with the pain and trying to find other alternatives to help with the pain. And I don't know. I, I honestly don't know at this point. What a sad story. Jeff, I really appreciate your coming on uh, and, and, the, and the note that you wrote us. Thank you. No problem. We're rooting for you. Thank you. Have a good one.